so excited because the Step the Out Step TV, Out shows TV shows are back live on T2I TV. And for those who don't know, Step Out is a series of interviews and motivational segments designed to bring the best out of you and your business. Therefore, we have the following TV programs. Our first TV program, which is our flagship program, dubbed Step Out Step with out Oscar, with Oscar Bimpong, Bimpong, is designed to interview consultants, experts, talented people, and those doing exceptionally well in their communities. The second one is Step is Out Step SME, out, SME, out, SME, SME Focus. 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 This is where we interview business owners and showcase their products and services. The third one is Step is Out step Youth, out impact, youth zone. impact Zone. This is where we interview young people succeeding against all odds to serve as an inspiration to other young people. And the last one is Step Out Authors, Authors Corner. Corner. And this is where we interview authors to share what their book is about to the world. Join us every week. Like T2I TV on Facebook and subscribe to the YouTube channel. To advertise or for further information, do WhatsApp plus 447591152983 or plus 233-55580-3924 or email info at traintoinspire.com. T2I TV. We engage, educate, enlighten, and empower. empower. Welcome to another exciting edition of the Step Out with Oscar Bimpo. And tonight we have got a very powerful show that we are coming to bring to you. Um, we want to encourage everyone that is watching us to really share this for somebody to have an opportunity to watch this. Also, um, I want to mention a few of our sponsors. This program is sponsored by Train to Inspire Consultancy. That is your business training and consulting firm. Train to Inspire also work with schools, colleges, and universities in relation to their personal development. Also, ZP Ghana Limited, your remittance and mobile money company based in Ghana. ZP just launched their USSD code for mobile money, and that is star 270 hash. Just dial it on your phone and register for ZP mobile money. If you want to contact any of our sponsors, their contact details are scrolling on the screen. Take them and contact them. Also, if you want to sponsor any of our shows, you are more than happy to do so. Just take the number for T2I TV UK or Train to Inspire Consultancy, and we are going to work with you. Um, I'm always your regular host for the Step Out with Oscar Bimpon shows, and tonight, we have got a very powerful discussion that we are going to bring on your way. Now, before I call on my guests, I want each and everyone that is watching us to share this for somebody to have an opportunity to watch this discussion. It's going to be a very powerful discussion. It's going to be inspirational. It's going to be thought-provoking. And it is going to inspire you for you to believe again that it can be done. And my guest is not new on my show. He's been, she's been on my radio shows back in the days. And tonight we have decided that she deserves to come back on the show. Why? Because she's got so much in her that the world should hear. So we are just really providing our quota in our own small way for the world to hear this powerful voice that is designed to change our world, especially on the continent of Africa and those in the diaspora. Now, who is on the hot seat tonight? I know some of you will be itching to meet her. Yes. Who is on the hot seat? Um, she is an award-winning entrepreneur, 
She is an energy consultant. She is a woman empowerment advocate, author, and a talk show host. She is in a person of Muriel Tolekima. Please welcome to Step Out at Oscar Bimpo and you are live on TTY TV UK. Thank you, thank you, Oscar. Thank you for having me today and uh, for, you know, giving me the opportunity to step out and, mm -hmm. uh, you know, have a, a great conversation with your audience and on a subject that is going to be very empowering for them because, you know, mm -hmm. as you know, we are in the middle of a pandemic and, mm -hmm. uh, you know, some people have lost hope and it's time to give them back their hope and to make them understand that they have the power to change things. And I'm really, really honored to be back on your show. It's been a while, like you said, but it's always a pleasure to be here. Wow, 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 wow. It's been a pleasure to also have you on our show. And trust me, we are always blessed whenever you are here. Now, let me go straight to business because people are itching to hear from you. But our topic is a very powerful topic, rebuild and dare to excel. Now, before I go on to our topic, I ask any of my guests this question. Who is Muriel Tolukima in your own words? Oh, Mirai Tulekima is a multidimensional woman. So uh, I, my background, like you said, is in the energy sector. So I've been uh, working in the energy sector for uh, more than 20 years now. Uh, so I, I'm an engineer by formation. So I've, you know, I've worked in different positions. And I'm now on my uh, own, you know, I created a consultancy here in Perth, Australia, where I am, I am based. So I've worked internationally before, but in parallel, I'm doing a lot of empowerment work and uh, it's all about, uh, I'm all about greatness and people even call me the greatness mm. engineer because uh, for me mm. it's about empowering people it's about empowering and i focus a lot on women so empowering women to understand that they have you know mm. greatness inside of them and to step into their greatness mm. and understand that you know they, mm. they they are only limited by the, the limit that they put in themselves and that's really my message in everything that i do in all the platform that I've, I've created under the Mirai Telekima Global Leadership Organization is about, you know, making sure people understand that they have the control, they have greatness, and they should step into their power to be able to become the best version of themselves. So that's, uh, that's me. Uh, I also do a lot of humanitarian work uh, around women again, and I also started a social, a social project uh, mm -hmm. called the STEM Queen, STEM standing for science, technology, and um, science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. Mm -hmm. And uh, we started the process in Uganda to empower women into STEM. And the objective is to, you know, go around Africa and mm. have this project expanded so that we can mm. have our girls and our women uh, be part of the STEM industry and help the continent to, uh, to, to, to really, you know, go to the next level as far as the development is concerned and create some sustainability uh, in, in, mm. you know, in the continent. So that's wow. uh, in a nutshell with Mirai Telekima. There's mm. more, but, uh, in the interest of time, I think that's enough to describe who I am. Mm, wow, 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 wow. But why women? Nowadays, you guys are really leaving the men out. Why? It's always women. <laughs> the men, we don't leave the government, right? No, but we have men. We have men. It doesn't mean that, you know, when we talk about women empowerment, it doesn't mean that we leave men behind. We actually, mm. you know, bring men with us. And because mm. men are ahead, they actually, mm. you know, playing the role of, you know, uh, mm. themselves bringing more women. And it's not just about the gender issue, but it's also because uh, women are qualified as well and they, you know, we need, there are some gaps, skill gaps mm -hmm. that women can feel and, you know, it's, it's about time that they get integrated as well, especially in those technical, uh, technical industry, there's, uh, there's a shortage and uh, so it's important that to, you know, to tap into the woman pool to be mm -hmm. able to, 
to close this gap so that everybody can, you know, benefit from it. So we, we're not really leaving, uh, leaving men, uh, you know, outside. And in everything that I do, I always include men. I've been mentored by men myself because, uh, as you know, the energy sector is very male-dominated. Yes. So anything that I do now, uh, men have played a part because a lot of them have been my mentor, my sponsor, uh, you know, in the absence of women. So uh, we can't really talk about, you know, isolating them. Otherwise, it's going to be very difficult. But uh, yes, because I wanted to ask you this question that you see the energy sector is highly men dominated, right? Mm -hmm. How do you thrive? Uh, how, how is the environment like for you as a woman? somebody who is rising into leadership roles how 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 how, how does it feel uh, how is it, are you comfortable just talk to us in such a mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. i mean it's been difficult because uh, as you can imagine you know i started you know ma more than 20 20 years ago and back then there were not a lot of women there were not a lot of women and there were not a lot of women of color mm. so that was uh, really a challenge and uh, but i think you know uh, challenges are like i said at the beginning are, are actually also we are responsible of those do you know the, the challenges that you know that we have into our life because we can have challenges, but it's about the mindset. And why am I doing saying that? It's because when I went into it, I was already going as a victim saying, okay, because I'm a woman, because I'm a black woman, whatever was happening to me, I, I, I was basically, I had a reason. But as soon as I changed my mindset mm -hmm. and started to really reach out to men, Mm -hmm. uh, things started to change. They started to offer to help. They started to, you know, uh, mentor me, sponsor me. And it was more about, you know, looking at this situation as me as a professional and me delivering and creating value. And as long as I was focusing on that, things were working really well. But, uh, but obviously, I mean, there's, there, there are always challenges like everywhere. But uh, like I said, you know, it's also about your mm. mindset and it's also about mm. how you communicate, how you come across. Because for mm. some men, you know, they, they were not used to work with women. Mm. So there's, uh, there's also some uh, discomfort for them. And this discomfort can actually, uh, you know, materialize itself as being uh, very, uh, mm. you know, uh, very, um, how do you say that, very aggressive and very uh, conf confrontational and mm. it's about it, it's it was up to me to make them understand that i was there as a colleague and they, they were they didn't have to be confrontational or or you know uh, feel like you know uh, i didn't have a place we all had a place and uh, and obviously we all bring you know something positive for this industry, and I think that's uh, that's how I, I was able to navigate. Really understand that you know there are some differences, but at the end of the day, we have to work together, and whatever we bring, you know, on the table is for the good of everybody. It's for the good of everybody. Now, your topic: rebuild and dare to excel, and that is now I'm going into your topic. Mm -hmm. Now, rebuilding means that rebuild the vision that they have already um, probably lost through coronavirus. But now let me, let, me, let me take you back. Some people don't even have a vision and they have got nothing to rebuild. Mm -hmm. And coronavirus has made their life worse, right? Mm -hmm. Now, those people, where do they start from? Mm -hmm. I mean, there's, it's, it's not late, even if you had nothing before. I mean, it's, it's, it's not too late to start to... Uh, have a different approach, and that's that's really what the rebuild or you know the the the, the change of mindset because rebuild is not just looking at physical things; it's also rebuilding yourself, you know, your mindset, and that's you know that's that's really where people should focus on. And and I think you know, uh, for those who didn't have anything, the coronavirus actually forced them to mm. start thinking about you know. What are the solution for them if they want to uh, to change their, their, their the dynamic if they want to change their situation 
And that's that's really what you know the rebuild is all about. It's the, the it's not just the physical rebuild, it's more the mindset rebuild. And as you know, we were talking before, is you know, the mindset is really everything. If you don't have the right mindset, it becomes really difficult for you to move forward. You get stuck, especially if you uh, if you identify yourself to your condition, you get stuck. And that's that's become really difficult for you to to get out of any challenge that you have. If it's if it's poverty, you stay in poverty because you know you identify yourself to this state that you are in, and yet you forget that you still because you are alive, you still have a chance to change things. And uh, it's it's about you to sit down and uh, try to see who you're going to reach out to. How are you going to, you know, uh, uh, move forward and and really push, you know, forward? Because yes, it's not easy, uh, as you know, if you you have nothing. But if you don't actually do anything, then you, you're not going to move. You're going to stay where you are. So you, it's worth, you know, uh, for those people to to try to do something because they have nothing to lose anyway anymore. So at at home, so try something, reach out, uh, find you know a solution. I know it's difficult in Africa, but you know, like I always tell you know my my brothers and sisters in Africa is that entrepreneurship is about solving problems, mm -hmm. and we have so many problems in Africa. So <laughs> there's something to you know <laughs> something to find. There's some, there's always a problem to find that you you know you you can you can try to solve and then you are by the by the time you realize you are an entrepreneur so mm. that's mm. Uh, that's really my philosophy here mm. I, I always tell people that nobody buy the problems that you discuss mm -hmm. they only buy the solutions you bring on the table mm -hmm. and if the african continent has got so much problems then I believe that is the best place to be. Exactly. Because if you come to Europe and America, they have solved many of their problems. Mm -hmm. So you don't have much problems to solve. No. But in Africa, there is so much problems that you can solve. Mm -hmm. But then you made mention of people have got nothing to lose. Mm -hmm. Don't you think a lot of people are also afraid to take risk? And that's the problem. And that's what I'm saying is that, you know, if you're already in the hole, mm -hmm. whatever risk that you are going to take, especially, I mean, if, if you take as an image, you are at the bottom of the, you know, the, the somewhere, and then you, tr you, you just sit there instead of trying to go up, the, it, it's not going to change. But at least by trying to go up, you might slip back. But you never know, you might actually get out of this hole. So try something. Don't just sit down and tell yourself that you have nothing and, and wait, because waiting will not give you anything. You need to, to, to keep moving. You need to find you know, a way to, to do something that, are, that is going to uh, help you to go to, to make a step, you know, even if it's a baby step, even if it's a small step take the courage, take risk, and, uh, and, and a risk has never, has never actually killed anybody, especially now with the pandemic, you know. Nobody was prepared with, you know, with this pandemic, and yet, you know, there are some people uh, who thought that, you know, they were immune, they had so much money, they have everything that they had, but yet the pandemic came and, 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 and uh, remind them that, you know, it's not a security. So you have the, the best security is for you to have the right mindset and to have the right, you know, uh, tools and processes so that when you lose it, you can rebuild it. And that's uh, that's the most important thing, because everything, you know, all, all these things that are material, if you cling to that, then, you know, it, it becomes very difficult for you when you lose all of this to to tell yourself, you know, that's okay. I lost it, but I can rebuild it. I have the tools. I have the mindset. I'm going to push myself to uh, to do that. Now you made mention of baby steps, and somebody mm -hmm. might say, "Tolokima is going to take me how many years for me to take these baby steps to get to where I am?" Mm -hmm. Now, 
If somebody tells you that, what can you tell them for them to believe that the baby steps is equally important if you had to also take or be able to run? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. The, I mean, the, 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 um, and, and there's, uh, you know, um, the, the most important thing is the destination. And that's, mm. that's always what I said, it's the destination. Uh, you know, there are different routes, you know, when, when you, I mean, when you live in a city, you know, there's different way to, to get to a certain point. So it doesn't matter what way you take, as long as you know that you're going to get there. And, and mm. I think that's, that's the most important thing because sometimes you, you, you may want to rush, but uh, you might actually come across so many obstacles as well. And, uh, and it might actually uh, slow, slow you in a way. So you, you, you have to get, you know, and I think what's important is to get in your head that, uh, you know, you're going to get to your destination. There are different ways to go there. And mm. it's not, it's not a, you know, it, it's not a sprint, you know, it's not a sprint. It's, a, you know, you have to be, uh, re you have to be there at each, at each level. And at some point you're going to get there because when you want to speed sometime, that's when you go and, 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 you know, eat yourself in a wall and, uh, and you, you get knocked out. And that's, that's why, you know, I, I think the baby step, are one thing that you shouldn't forget to, to think about this, uh, you know, this reward that you're going to get. So start small, go, go, go slow, but, you know, uh, think about, think big and dream big. And that's, and that's, I think, that the, the key thing. I mean, if you can go quickly, that's one thing. But if you have no choice and you basically paralyze, taking just one small step will really revigorate you and give you the, you know, the, the energy that you need to keep going and to keep, to keep pushing yourself instead of just, you know, uh, looking at things and saying, okay, I can't reach this this place unless I run. And if I can't run, I'm not doing anything. Now, let me ask you this. One of the biggest challenges when it comes to people starting their vision or rebuilding their vision, mm -hmm. you speak to 100 people and 99 will tell you it's money. Mm -hmm. Money, the biggest obstacle for people not being able or the biggest excuse for us not to start our vision. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, and, and that's, uh, you know, that's something that I always hear uh, a lot, especially, uh, you know, in, in Africa is that when you ask them to do something, oh, I don't have money, oh, I can't, I can't do this. Mm. But yet, you know, uh, sometimes you just have to have the idea and reach out to the right people, because if you're already putting a, a, a blockage on yourself, then you, you, you start to, you know, you, you, you don't think anymore and you stop the process and that's it. That's the end for you. Mm -hmm. I mean, I've seen, for example, in, uh, in Cameroon, there are women. I mean, they can't get money from the banks. You know, uh, they, they, they want to start, you know, uh, sell some of their goods and things. They, they can't start money. They can't get money from the banks because they're, they're not going to get it. And what they do, they put money together. So they, they, they basically reach out to different women who have projects in mind and they put money together and they each month one of them just put a little bit of money and, and, and they rotate to take you know, the, the money and then it gives them the opportunity to, uh, you know, to, to get and implement something. So that's, that's already a strategy. It means that you know, they don't get the money straight away but you know, at some point they get enough money to start, you know, a small business or something. So we we have to stop putting money as you know as the the key excuse because that's actually creating a blockage for us. And sometimes they are you know way of trading that mm. uh, that you you can have. For ex for example, I've I've had you know uh, at some point. Uh, people, I had the knowledge and then didn't have the money, but people needed this knowledge. So what I, I would do is, you know, give my knowledge and at some point they would give me, uh, uh, you know, they would give me 
uh, a piece of, you know, of, of the venture that we were starting. So at the beginning, I was not making money, but it helped me to start and to get a share in what they were doing. And at, and at, at, at uh, some point become, you know, get the money that I didn't have at the beginning. So there are ways that you need to think about. You don't have to be a conventional way where people have to give you money or people you have to, 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 to get a loan from the bank. You have to be, I think, especially right now, you have to be very creative at, you know, uh, creating the right partnerships and, and reaching out to the right people that are going to help you to uh, to implement whatever you want and even if it means that at the beginning you have to give things for free and then get it back later on wow wow you made mention of doing things for free and i think mm -hmm. that is a big problem also with our african people people mm -hmm. some people i'm not going to say all of them they don't see the need to mm -hmm. really do things for free to be able to enter into the market Mm -hmm. Now, those people, what are you going to tell them? Mm -hmm. they, they, I mean, they're, they're wrong because, you know, and, 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 and it's well known when you give, you get back at some point. And that's, uh, that's important. So the initial process is very important, I, I, even for us as, you know, mm -hmm. as you do your show. And I also have, you know, a, a, a show as well. At the beginning, you bring people, you, 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 it's a lot of work to set up all of this, but then, you know, in return, there are partnerships that are created, you know, you, 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 you connect with some people and some people just, you know, you start, you know, to have a relationship with them. And by mm -hmm. the time you realize you, you've built a business and, you know, but, and then if you, you really structure about all the things, that is that you, you, you start to, you know, generate income. But you gave first, you gave all those hours to, to build this platform. And then, you know, at some point, the platform is going to give you back. So it's free at the beginning, but at the end, you know, if you're very strategic, it doesn't have to be free for the whole time. Yes. So, and, 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 that's, uh, and that's what, you know, I, I always advocate with, you know, the young entrepreneur that, uh, that I, I coach is that, you know, at the beginning, you have to, to give, you know, for, for, to, to create even this, um, uh, uh, this trust, you know, because people have to trust you, they have to trust your knowledge. And when they are in this trust, you know, uh, mode, then everything can happen. And that's when, you know, you start to see the transaction, you start to see the trade. So it's, it's not a, a bad thing to give first, especially if you know that you're giving quality. And, and that's an important process because especially now, right now, I mean, nobody's gonna give you your, his money like that if you mm -hmm. don't have money. Mm -hmm. You have to prove to them that you can bring value into their life. And mm -hmm. how do you do that if you don't have, you, you give first, which is your, your skills, your knowledge, mm. or, you know, uh, your effort, physical effort. And then when they, they, they see this trust, then, you know, you, you start seeing now money flowing and a, a transaction is happening. Even, but, you know, uh, before that, it becomes very difficult. You know, you, I mean, there are people who are lucky, but, uh, but I think that's not uh, 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 something that we can say it's, it, it's, it's common now. Do you think people are really hungry to succeed, or it's just a rhetoric that people think um, are just people are just talking, but they are not doing? Do you think mm -hmm. people are really hungry to succeed? I think a lot of people are just emulating what they see, mm -hmm. uh, and that's why you know I always you know try to uh, tell people that you know my success is not the same as your success so mm -hmm. you have to define what is your success because mm -hmm. if you know you just want to be like somebody else it becomes very difficult to motivate yourself so mm -hmm. if you really want to be successful the first thing that you do is sit down and think about you know what is success for you and then as soon as you've defined it that's when the energy is generated. That's when mm. you go the extra mile. That's when you, 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 you give for free at the beginning and you know that at the end you're going to get. But if you just want to copy or just want to say, I want to be like this person, mm. 
mm. it becomes it becomes really irrelevant and it's become very difficult to succeed and i don't think you know people who are doing that i don't think they want to succeed because mm. that's not what success is all about you know mm. and 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 for me success is something very personal and mm. you have to define what it is and when you define what it is and you know what it is then you, you're going to get there. And that's that's the most important thing. This is just to do like the neighbor. I want to be the, a millionaire like my neighbor. I want. It's going to be very difficult. You might get there, but you're not going to stay there. You're going to go down there because that's not what success is for you. It's not, it does not be defined for you. It was defined, you, you just copy what, what happened. And, uh, and, and I think that's, that's, I mean, that's what, you know, that's my philosophy is that, you know, you might actually succeed, but are you going to be happy? Mm. Are you really going to be happy? So um, there's a lot of, you know, people talking and, and doing all kind of thing, but I don't think that they've had, they've had you know, uh, they, they sat down to really understand what success is for them and what are the steps they need to take, uh, you know, uh, to be there. And 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 really go for it. It's quite it's quite it's quite interesting because um, you, you made a powerful statement, and that is success is a choice, mm -hmm. and someone's success is not your success. Mm -hmm. But we are getting into the age where people think um, they they compare their success to others. But I think we are all on a different path. Mm -hmm. I always say that the way I write. It is it, the way I write is different from the way Tony Robbins writes. It's different from mm -hmm. the way Les Brown writes. It's different mm -hmm. from the way John Maxwell writes. I'm unique, right? Mm -hmm. I, I, I don't. I learn from them, but I don't do what they do because mm -hmm. I am unique. I, I I want people just because you see when you see McDonald's, nobody tells mm -hmm. you it's McDonald's, right? And um, mm -hmm. when you see KFC, nobody tells you it's KFC. You just see it straight away. So mm -hmm. I want to get to the state where people just say, oh, that is Oscar Bimpo, right? Mm -hmm. I want to bring my own uniqueness into uh, onto the table. And I think mm -hmm. that is what a lot of people are finding it difficult to do. How mm -hmm. can people stand out in the marketplace? Because that is the only way people can identify them. How can people do that? And, and I think the, the you know, how... How can people, uh, you know, identify? You, first of all, you have to know who you are. You have to know who you are. Who are you? What are you tr trying to accomplish? That's the first thing. And then find this uniqueness that you have, and then step into it. So that that's that's just simple. Just sit down, look at you know who you are, where you are, what are you know what do you like, what do you excel in, what are the gaps that you have. And then identify this unique thing that you you know you 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 really want, and you know that you have inside, and just go for it. Mm -hmm. And it means it it just means you know. And and that's what I always talk about people is instead of comparing yourself to another pe person, compare yourself to the person you were yesterday, because mm -hmm. it's about you becoming the best version of yourself, and that's how you can excel in everything that you do. So you have to benchmark with yourself. You have to benchmark with where you are at a certain moment so that you can improve and become, you know, the best version and be able to bring, you know, exceptional value and authenticity in the market where you are. Because if you're just like everybody and if you just copy, it becomes very difficult for you to excel. So you have to find this little, this authenticity, this thing, this gift that was given to you, you know, what is it and how are you gonna use it to, 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 to actually, you know, uh, be, you know, on a mission to become the best version of yourself using this simple gift that you have. Mm. Because you see is, I want to add to what you are saying. And, I, and there's one thing I also tell people is that once you want to be the best compared to your yesterday, you should always keep an eye on your competitors as well, right? Mm -hmm. Because somebody is also watching to take your position, right? Mm -hmm. So if it's in the 100 meters race and today you did 11 seconds, the next day you do 10 seconds, 
you also have to know your environment that if somebody has already done eight seconds then it means that you need to work with you you need to work harder why because if you benchmark with yourself alone and not benchmarking with the industry or your competitors then sometimes you can also lose out so uh, yeah, so I, I think that is how it should be. But then we are talking about rebuilding because of coronavirus, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And rebuilding means that a lot of people have lost so much. Mm -hmm. And post-pandemic is where people are going to rebuild their lives, rebuild their vision, rebuild their business, whatever that they aspire to be. Mm -hmm. Now, the mm -hmm. question I want to ask is, what mindset do they need to really rebuild? So uh, the first step in the in the rebuilding process, like you said, you know, people have lost so much, mm. uh, you know, and and what happens when when you lose so much like that, you tend to stay in the past. Mm. So you know, you 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 regret. You you start to think about how oh, I've lost so much, and so you you basically stay in the past. And the first thing is to accept that you've lost all of this, but then you know, tell yourself okay, now I can't get it back. You know, whatever is lost is lost. Now I need to think about how do I, you know, I, I, I create new opportunities for me, for me. So that's the first thing in, in shifting, you know, shifting your, your, your mindset to the past, from the past to the present where you are. Is that, is easy? It, is that easy? Because that is accepting the fact that this has happened, I have to move on. Is that easy? It's not easy. It's not easy. And I think a lot of people are still stuck in, in, in you know, what they've lost, especially the one that we've lost a lot. So it's not an, it's not an easy process, but I think it's something that is necessary if they really want, if they really want to have, you know, to start the rebuilding process. So whoever is listening, wherever you are, if you still, you know, mourning what you've lost, please make an effort to say, okay, I'm going to make peace with myself. I lost it. Mm. Now let's think about, you know, what can I do mm. to, you know, take myself out of, out of the situation where I am. So that's the first thing. Mm. The second thing is to do an inventory of what you are able to do. Mm. So, I mean, this is the pandemic. Yes, I know there are not a lot of opportunity, but really look, what is the there's an opportunity somewhere. What can I do? What are the skills that I have? What are the, you know, who are the people that I know? Do a, a real inventory of, you know, yourself in first and then p the people that you have around. And the next step is to, to, to check, you know, and, and, and basically, you know, if there's no opportunity anymore in your, in your industry to pivot and, and uh, collaborate with the people that you have around you that can, you know, uh, help you. Why do I say that? For example, if you were, uh, you had a restaurant and then you, you, you've, you've lost everything or it's closed because of lockdown. And then there's somebody who had, it was a taxi or anything. People still eat. So what you can do is, you know, maybe partner with somebody and then deliver things, you know, to houses. So things like that, start to think about what, what's, what's, you know, what is around me, what is in my environment, and how can I use it, how can I connect with people to create, you know, a collaboration where we all win, so have a win-win situation. It's not going to be about me only now. I have to think about, okay, what is the strategic alliances that I can have, mm. and then, and then uh, really uh, keep going. And it's also uh, so... I know it's not easy. It's not an easy process. It's not a natural process. But I think if you try, you will at least, you know, make a baby step mm. or even, you know, an, another step if it's, if it's, uh, if, it's um, if it's, if it's, if not. So that's, that's really what I, I would recommend. And, and, and really keep pushing because um, we're going to get out of it. Uh, I don't know. It's a matter of time. We're going to get out of it. So for those who don't have opportunity, it's maybe the time to step back and learn, learn, you know, uh, 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 try to see uh, what you can learn 
and uh, and and uh, especially if you know they are and I, and I think the pandemic has brought the opportunity of being online now so mm -hmm. learn about the, the internet uh, you know get the right skills and and pivot your business if you can online or uh, like I said you know partner with people who are very mm -hmm. uh, very fluent with with the online process and 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 really go for it but don't you know don't sit and cry about what you've you've lost yeah you can cry that's fine but don't stay there mm -hmm. try to look at you know the opportunity try to there's always somebody that you know that you can you know reach mm -hmm. out or, uh, or or even you know um there's probably something that you you know how to do and that you can do you know uh, during this pandemic, it can be temporary before things come back, or it can be a, a, a total pivot that you that, that you do, and then you you go for it. There is one thing I always say, and I say it's normal to cry, but to stay crying is where the problem starts. Exactly. <laughs> you know? exactly. Yes, 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 yes. But you 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 made mention of partnership and strategic alliances, right? Mm -hmm. Now, as mm -hmm. African people. I'm, I might be wrong, but I think we rather love to compete than rather forming strategic alliances and partnership. What is your mm -hmm. thing on that? And, and that's why, you know, I'm talking about a, a, a shift of mindset. Mm. You know, I mean, you're not going to get anywhere if you don't partner right now, mm. you know, and that's that's a fact. I mean, you, you might be able in, in some instances to do that, but right now with what's happening and with the state of, you know, the uh, the the continent and the world right now partnership are key mm -hmm. and you have to think about you know uh, creating win-win situation because if you want to still compete it becomes a problem mm -hmm. it becomes a real problem because you know it, you, you it's going to be difficult it's going to be very difficult and we see it at the at the state's level you know countries have to uh, collaborate now to, you know, because of that, they have to collaborate, they have to work together, uh, even if they, they, they were competing before, because mm -hmm. that's the only way in the new world that where we are to, to be able to, uh, to be able to go forward. Mm -hmm. But it means that, you know, you don't have to see in your competitor, uh, an enemy in your competitor, mm -hmm. because, you know, um, at the end of the day, if you all go in the right direction, everybody is benefiting. So I think that's the way I see I see the new world. Uh, and things are changing so quickly. I mean, you know, and, and we've seen with, with the pandemic, I've accelerated the change and the complexity. Mm. So there's no way we will be able to master everything as one entity of our one organization there's going to be an area where we're going to be good and other area where we're going we're going to fall short so you really want to fill the gap and have somebody that can support you know the the lower points you know or the lower areas in in, in the, the, the the weak area in, in in you know in your organization or in a thing and which which you can do with collaborations what is one advice that you are going to give to somebody that have lost everything in this pandemic and they have to start all over again? Um, I mean, my advice is that, like I said, you know, cry a, a bit. Yeah, you can cry. That's fine. But uh, it's not it's not all lost. Uh, you know, you, you have to step back and think about, you know, what are the problems around? What are the, the problems that have been created? And how can I, I step into it to bring a solution? And I, and I think we talked about it at the beginning is that, uh, you know, being an entrepreneur is solving problems. So as, you know, as somebody who lost everything, look at things around you. What are the key problems? I mean, for example, um, in, the, in the health sector, you know, they, they, we've seen things re really people uh pivoting into the health sector or selling all kind of things or masks or because that's you know that's the problem that's the the, the problem of the of 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 the the time so look you know what are the problems that 
that, that, that you know, people are facing. How, how can, with the skills that you have, and if you don't have the skills, how can you get those skills so that you can come as a, as a problem solver? And then when you come as a problem solver, it, it helps you to start the rebuilding process. Mm, mm, mm. Learn to solve problems. Look, mm -hmm. I've really enjoyed this discussion, trust me. And I always say that when the discussion is very good, time really runs fast. And mm -hmm. um, we've, we've been able to really, um, really done, done, we've done justice to the topic. I've got some mm -hmm. few comments here, let me read them. Um, I've got Hughes Hope Rising Foundation. He says, great, good to watch this. Then Hughes Hope Rising Foundation also say, Muriel Tolikima, greatness, greatness re-engineering champion. Good to have you here. Then I've got Danny Artes saying, I'm inspired. Yes, Tolikima, it's, it's been wonderful having you, but then I want you to dare people to really go out there and pursue their vision. Yes, I mean, and, and that's why, you know, I uh, one of the process that I, I use myself and I call it the DARE process. And like I said, at the, day, the DARE process, DARE stands for decide, uh, act, uh, review, and expand. And, you know, uh, and, and we've seen with everything that's happening, everything, it starts with the decision that we are taking. Are we going to decide to stay where we are? Are we going to decide to try to go forward, uh, you know, forget, forget about what we've lost and then, you know, start to look at, you know, how can we move forward? So that's, that's the first thing. And then when we've, we've decided that we are going to, to move forward, we, we, we start to look at planning and strategies and people that we, we, we're going to, we, we're going to involve in the process. And, you know, when we've, 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 we've reached this, this level, then there's an action because you can have all those plans. You can have identify whatever it is. If you don't go and act and implement, nothing is going to happen. But this implementation doesn't you know, doesn't guarantee you that you're gonna you know you're gonna succeed. And that's where your risk appetite is very important. So if you're not you know a risk taker, you're gonna stay in this comfort zone where you are, and nothing is gonna happen. But you know, in this current in this current setting with the pandemic, you have to take risks, and which means that you know you have to implement and take those risks that are needed. And you might fail; you might not get anywhere or anything. But it just means that you know, when you fail, don't just stay there. Analyze what are the gap? Why did you you shortfall? And then and then try to find a solution to this shortfall so that you can you know. Uh, you know, stand up again and continue to rebuild yourself. And that's the only way you can, you can do that. And, and it's a recurring process, recurring process where, you know, you actually never, never fail because each time you have this opportunity to rethink, to see, you know, what is the best option. And like I said, you know, especially in Africa, we have problems everywhere. So it's, a, and on top of that, the pandemic brought so many other problems. So if you have certain skills or anything or any area that you identify and even if you don't have the skill try to find a way to find those skills that are going to be able to help you to uh, to to bring you know to create value so that you can generate income for yourself and for your family try to have a skill because a skill is what is going to help you to really enter the market and to mm -hmm. succeed as well mm -hmm. it's been wonderful having you and trust me i've enjoyed every bit of it but before we go um i want to recommend my book to everyone that is watching us it's mindset revolution re-engineering your mind from prison to purpose and we are talking about mindset if mm -hmm. you have lost everything during this pandemic your success or failure doesn't depend on what you don't have, but it depends on the mindset that you carry. Because the right mindset will gather resources again. It doesn't matter how scarce it is, but it is going to help you to start from somewhere. And that is what I always tell people, that 
a lot of people are seeking resources from the outside, neglecting the most powerful resource on the inside, and that is your mind. Mm. Your mind is the most powerful magnet you can ever think of. When you look at the magnet, the magnet knows its value, so it only attracts metals. When you have got the right mindset, it will skew your path for you to attract the right people and the right resources for your vision. Set your mind right, and everything on the outside will be set right. Go out there, pursue, and persevere until you succeed. Now, Muriel, your last word to everyone that is watching us. The last word for everyone that is watching us, I fully agree with you with, you know, the mindset is everything. If mm. you have the right mindset, mm. whatever you lose, you can rebuild it mm. because, you know, you have power. That's mm -hmm. your power. Yes. So step into your power. Mm -hmm. And one thing that I leave on and, and uh, that's, that's my motto is, you know, whatever happened to you, as long as you're alive, don't leave anything on the table of life. Mm. Take every single chance. Look for every single opportunity and go for it. Mm. Don't wait. Don't cry. Yes, you can cry, but don't stay in, in your crying mode. Don't leave anything on the table. Find a way. If there's no way, create this way for you to get forward. And that's, and, and that's the way you will, you know, become the best version of yourself mm. and be a, a, a real asset to the world mm. or to the community where you are. Wow, 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 wow. Thank you very much. And it's been wonderful having you on the show. Thank you so much for having me. It's been a pleasure to have yes. this, uh, this conversation. Thank yes. you so much. I really enjoyed every bit. And I think I have to leave you so quickly for you to go and sleep. It is around 4 a.m. at your end. And mm -hmm. trust me, you, and that, that, is, that is the mindset, that is the passion we are talking about. You see, if you believe in what you do, if you love what you do, it doesn't matter whether it is midnight or it doesn't matter whether it's in the afternoon. Every mm -hmm. time you are called upon, you are ready. And these are the sacrifices that separate what I call the heat from the chaff. You, you need to really be dedicated to what you believe in. And this is what somebody that is had to stay awake 3 a.m. to be part of this discussion. I really salute you for this, and we really appreciate every bit of your time. Thank you very much. Thanks wow. for uh, for having you know this uh, this conversation. It's a very important one, yeah. especially in this time of you know where people are looking for, you know, direction, they're looking for solution. Mm. I think we, we have, you know, as leader, we have, you know, the, you, we have to stand up and, you know, help, you know, and guide, you know, people to the right, uh, to the right, uh, give them the right advice, the right tools so that mm. they can, you know, get out of this scarcity mindset that uh, mm. some of us, some of them have. Mm. There is no scarcity when it comes to the seed, right? Mm -hmm. It can be one seed, but it can house generation of seeds. Mm -hmm. So it, it, that is what I always tell people. So it's about what you have in your hands that looks like the seed. It can be generational. Its power of multiplication is so powerful. Mm -hmm. But you can only multiply it if you invest the small that you have. The power of multiplication is in your investment. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people, they don't want to invest the small they have, but they want to earn more. It's never going to happen. Mm -hmm. Look, I've enjoyed every bit of this. Get the book at Amazon. Just type Mindset Revolution. Oscar Bimpo is going to pop up. Get your copy. Get your children to read this book. My son has already finished the book. And he was like, Daddy, when I read one page, I cannot put it down. I have to move on to the next page because I just want to read what was next. And trust me, this is what we need, especially during this pandemic. We mm -hmm. need to set our mind right. Otherwise, we are going to really live and die in a comfort zone that was created mm -hmm. by this pandemic. Mm -hmm. We are more powerful, greater than this. Whatever level that you find yourself in, you are greater than that. Just maximize your potential, go out there and do things to the best of your ability 
on a consistent basis and over mm -hmm. time you are going to succeed you are going to get to where you want to be in life and you are going to be an inspiration to other people god richly bless everyone that watched us share this for somebody to have an opportunity to watch this like our page t2y tv uk on facebook and subscribe to our youtube channel thanks to everyone and god richly bless you and thanks one once again to Likima for your time thank you bye bye